says that an elder, pastor must be blameless, husband of one wife, must be teachable and able to teach. And these are the qualities that for the time that I have known Dr. Adams, these are the qualities that I've seen. And I'm so glad today to, to signify the call of God on his life. Now, I declare that God has already ordained. I'm just signifying the ordination of the call. So at this time, I want to lead. I'm going to ask if you would just bow your heads where you are as we kneel in prayer and we offer a prayer of ordination as much as we can. God who calls and who ordains, who calls to a sacred work such as this. God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will rest upon your manservant. Bless him, O oh God, I pray. Bless his family. God, I pray that the anointing of your Holy Spirit will fill his life. I'm not asking you for just an anointing, but I'm asking you for a double portion of your anointing. Oh God, wherever he goes, God, I pray that whenever people look at him, they will know that he's anointed. They will know that he's been appointed by you. They'll, be know, they'll know that he's been with Jesus. Oh God, I pray for covering over his life. I pray for protection over his life. I pray that no harm, no danger will come to his family. I pray, oh God, that everything he touches will be blessed. I pray, oh Father, that wherever, wherever his heart, whatever his heart's desire, I pray that you will give it to him. You said in your word, we, we ask, we get not because we ask not. And so, Father, we ask these blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask that you will bless him. We ask that you will show favor on him. We ask that you will lift up your countenance on him and be gracious unto him. We ask, oh God, that you will forever be in his mind, God. Fill him with your Holy Spirit. Give him a, a, a spirit every day of surrender. May he surrender himself to you. And as he surrender his heart to you, God, just come and cover him. Take full control of his life, I pray. God, we thank you. Thank you for this anointing. And we pray and we believe that it's done in heaven. This is my prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. I just want to present him with a certificate of ordination as an elder of the Goshen Seventh-day Adventist Church family. Prayer time, church. Um, pastor gave us this really powerful book called Steps to Personal Revival. Um, I'll be back in the summer. And it's interesting, in the book it talks about the Holy Spirit, how important it is to invite the presence of the Holy Spirit. And it actually uh, tells us in the beginning of the book that you should probably good thing to do would be to read this book about seven times. And um, I'm 
I'm on the second time reading it. Each time I, I find something new. But one thing that stuck out when uh, we had our elders call, we're going over this book now, and there's a statement in here that says, morning by morning, he communicated with his Father in heaven, receiving from him daily a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. So this is a daily thing that we have to be consecrated daily. It's not something we can skip. It's not something we can run out without doing. We need, if Jesus, I'm going to say that again, if Jesus needed a daily baptism of the Holy Spirit, how much more do we, church? So I invite you, those who can, to kneel and those who'd like to come down to the altar so we can ask for our daily baptism of the Holy Spirit, among other things. But the Holy Spirit is so needed in our churches and our lives, something that we can't do without. Heavenly Father, we come to you asking that your Holy Spirit would come and tabernacle with us today. We come asking, Father God, that it would just surround each and every one of us. That we would realize that without it, we are nothing. When you love us, Father God, you said that you would give us a comforter. Someone that would lead and guide us in all things, not some things, but all things. So, Heavenly Father, right now, we just want to thank you for that comforter, for that guide, your Holy Spirit. Father, I ask that if there be anything in me, that would keep this prayer from being heard. I ask forgiveness of my sins. I ask that you would create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. That the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart are acceptable in your sight. I ask, Father, that you would move me out of the way and that this prayer would be heard. Thank you so much, Father, for bringing us here today. Thank you that we can come together and, and have an installation service for a mighty man of God, a man of valor, Father God, Dr. Casey Adams. We thank you for him, Father God. He has been a blessing, him and Caroline, to us. And Father, we just lift them up and their families that are here, Father God. And we ask that your Holy Spirit would just surround them and and just be a significant part of their lives. Father God, we know that Satan is angry when we are doing things to lift him up, to lift up Jesus. So, Father God, I ask that you would, your angels would encamp around him at all times and his family. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the Sabbath day. Thank you, Father God, for a time that we can come aside and be reminded that you are complete control. And Lord, that we have your righteousness. And with that, we can do all things. We can't do anything without you, but we thank you for that righteousness. Father God, I ask that you would be with those who are sick, who are in need of prayer. I ask a special prayer for Miss Burton and um, Barbara Jones, I ask, Father God, that you would continue to be with 
all of those who are, are sick and shut in in any way. Be with our families. Father God, I thank you for our young people who are coming back from school, Damiana and Eugene and Camille and all of those who will be coming home. I ask that you would be with them, Marcel and Justin and also Jasmine and as a special prayer on each and every one of them as they travel. Lord Jesus, be with our seniors. They are the backbone of our church. I ask that you would continue to touch them and be with their health. And be with our children, Father God. Oh, what a wonderful church to have children, Father God. It means that we're growing. And I ask that you would continue to be with our young adults, Father God. Sometimes looked at us forgotten, but Father, they are so important. Bless and keep us. Watch over us, Lord. Be with each and every visitor who's come out here today. And Father, as we prepare for our community baby shower uh, tomorrow, I ask that you would be with each and every mom who is registered, each and every dad who will be coming, each and every child. And continue to be with all of us that are planning. It's been a little overwhelming, Father God, but we know that you will be glorified. So I ask, Father, that you would just take over, that you would take the wheel on this, and that above all, that you would be glorified. It's not about us, Father God. I have to remember that over and over. It's not about us, but it's about giving you the glory. And Lord, we want you to be glorified. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, may you be glorified tomorrow. Father God, bless speaker I ask that you would hide him behind the cross and that we would hear a word from the Lord today we all need a word from the Lord I know I do father so bless and keep us keep us close to you Lord and we'll be very careful to give you all the glory all the honor and all the praise in Jesus name we pray amen to separate the time because I think there are two separate things and I think that it's two important things. I have prayed for a few things and I, I know I, I can tell you that God is good to me just as I know he's good to you. Uh, since I started pastoring this church, and I know that I have a bigger vision than money, bigger vision than anything can even begin to fulfill but God. I've asked for an associate to help move this work along. And we've had many Andrew students that come by, but not that one that would stay for a while. But God had sent to us Dr. Casey Adams. And I can tell you, I love working with this young man. The first time, my first task I give, because just so you, nobody don't know, but I will normally give a little task to see how people work. Just a test. Ellen White says to test the gifts. And I was shocked when I gave a little task, and by the time I spin around, it was done. Every time something, it's done. I'm like, this is efficiency. I like this. I can, I can roll with this. We can get things done. So I can tell you, I am so pleased 
to have uh, someone like Dr. Adams stand by my side as an associate to move God's work along. The church has voted it. The elders voted it. We all have agreed on it. And we know that we are going to have tremendous success by the grace of God with Dr. Adams. You have his bio, so I wouldn't spend time reading it. And you've heard from him, you've known him because he's been with us. But I do want to let you know that he has been very instrumental in starting our grief ministry program. He's very instrumental in doing a lot of things in the church. And I want us to stand, you to stand by him and give him the same respect or even more than you give to me. Amen, somebody. Amen. Not less, but more. So this time I would like to call Dr. Adams and his lovely wife. If they will join me here on the platform. He's going to go get his lovely wife. And Amen. Amen. What we're doing today, just to let so that you know, it's to install him as the associate executive pastor of this church. Someone that will work closely with me and closely with the elders and closely with the board and closely with all of you. And his lovely wife that is standing next to his side, and she will be his support. Amen? Amen. Because that's what a good wife does. And we know that she is a good wife that stands and supports him. I want my elders to join me at this time on the platform. And each elder will take a moment to welcome Dr. Casey and his wife. And then we will have a prayer of installation as we install them into the ministry of the Goshen Seventh-day Adventist Church. Dr. Casey and Caroline, we already love you. We are you are already all right with us. We, got, we already love you. But on a half behalf of the hospitality department, the women's ministry department, and also the Sabbath school department, we welcome you and we love you. Dr. Adams and Caroline, on behalf of the prayer ministry and health ministry and, and also our music ministry, which you have been so involved with already, me and Caroline, <laughs> who has uh, enjoyed, we had a wonderful time with Caroline at the women's ministry last week. So she has come and just kind of just fits in with us and we, and we love her. We love her because we're old and she's young. <laughs> well. so. It makes us young. So on behalf of uh, health ministry and prayer ministry and also music, we welcome you. And I know you already feel welcome. You said that a long time ago. We welcome you to a Goshen church family. I have called you Pastor Casey. Pastor, I think I had Davis in there for a while. <laughs> Pastor Adams, we're so grateful to have you and sweet Caroline with us. Um, she looks really quiet, right? <laughs> he looks really, really stand-uppish and right. And they are. <laughs> but they also have that other side, that fun side, and they've shown it to us. So, and and um, we're just so grateful to have you with us. And on behalf of the greeters, the ushers, and the deaconess, we are so glad 
to have you with us. You have been such a blessing to us already, even from the first Sabbath. And um, I, I just love the way you've just come in, like Pastor said, you, you, you found your niche, you've gone with it, you've run with it, and that's what we need. So Goshen Church is so blessed to have you here with us today. And I just want to say I met your mother. When she introduced herself as your mother, and I said, you mean his sister? <laughs> But she's a lovely lady. She uh, spent Sabbath school with us today. So we're just so grateful. Thank you. And this is your father? Yes. Thank you for sharing Amen. your son and your daughter-in-law with us. We thank you. And we're just so blessed to have you with us. You know, over the last few years, I've gotten the habit, like a lot of young people have, of calling pastors by their first names. So Pastor Casey, just want to, as one of the newest elders here, just want to welcome you to Goshen. Um, you're already part of the family, so. Amen. And, you know, like the other elders say, you've done a lot already to enhance the ministry of this church. So I'm looking forward to a whole lot more. Amen. So it's not, whole, not a whole lot more I can add to that. So uh, just on behalf of myself, my family, and anyone else that's new here to Goshen, welcome. Pastor Casey, uh, wife Carolyn, um, I just want to welcome you. I, I'm so proud and glad that you guys have joined us already. Let me tell you, uh, Pastor Casey is lighting up my load tremendously. <laughs> <laughs> He's um, helping with the support and the communications department. I'm, I'm calling, I'm asking Pastor Casey for help. You know, so this is a first. Uh, I just want to thank you, and I'm, I'm looking forward to working with you, uh, representing the communications department, representing um, iWork Chicago, the job fair uh, um, uh, production, and w um, welcoming you on the, on the behalf of those ministries. And just we just look forward to working with you, and and, and, and we we know it's going to be a blessing because it already has been. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Sad and, and his wife. Um, you know, it's we we generally get the message sometimes a little late. I believe this is something the Lord has been working on probably a couple of years ago, and He just materialized. And we we the church want to thank you for accepting the field that the Lord has put you in, which is Goshen family. We're glad to have you on behalf of the elders, the treasury department, and a few other departments. We're surely glad to have you. Amen. And we look forward to working and making your work easy. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'm going to have a prayer of installation. And I want you to know that at the end of service, you're free to congratulate and, and get to know uh, Dr. Adams and his lovely wife, Carolyn. Before I do that, I would like to just acknowledge his mom and dad that is in our midst today. If they would just wave their hands and, and just acknowledge them. And if we have any pastors and elders that's in the, in the room today, I want you to join us on the platform as we have a prayer of ordination and then we have some gifts that we want to give. So any elders or any pastors, you're free to join us at this time. Thank you. I'm gonna kneel. It's okay, but I'm gonna have him kneel too. And if you want to kneel by his side, and you can go to those who can. <laughs> Gracious Father in heaven, the
call to ministry is an awesome call. And God, I pray that you will indeed strengthen Pastor Casey as he leads in this church alongside myself. God, help us to be a, a team as Moses and Aaron was. God, I pray that you will bless our ministry here in this side of Chicago. I pray, God, that you will bless this church as they support him in ministry. I pray, God, that you will bless the elders as they stand by his side. I pray, Father, that you will bless his lovely wife as she stands with him. God, I pray that you will give them a great experience in ministry, one that they have never had before. Father, so many people complain how difficult ministry is, but I'm so glad that ministry is a wonderful thing when we put you before us. And so, Father, we put you in front of us. And we ask as we install him today as associated in this church, that you will bless his ministry. And we thank you, Father. And we praise you for this moment. And we give you glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. We have some tokens and our elders will now share a little bit of love, Goshen love. Uh, there's lots of love in this church as you've experienced it. We just want to uh, continue that tradition of love. Fruit is important. And, so, and food and thank you, Pastor. <laughs> thank it's heavy. It's weightlifting too. So, so on uh, behalf of our elders and our church family, I'd like to present you with this lovely fruit basket. And food, food is love. Carolyn is a special lady, and you are right here. Mm -hmm. This is especially for her flowers, her personality, all kind of colors, <laughs> all lovely and sweet. just want to welcome, welcome you guys, and as you continue your ministry journey, and we know that God will continue to bless you. Goshen family, would you give them a great welcome, a hand of applause, would you stand as we welcome them officially to the ministry of the Goshen Seventh-day Adventist Church. Well, praise the Lord. I, I, I'm speechless. Didn't know what to expect, but I, I appreciate the invitation Pastor has sent uh, for this call to ministry here at Goshen, and we pray that uh, as you've been a blessing to us, that we are a blessing to you as well. Um, Sister Frazier, can, can I borrow you for a moment, please? I, I will get beat up for this later, so if you see bruises on me, you know who to find. Can, can you come for a minute, please? Praise God for our first lady. We too have gifts. And we 
have something for both Pastor and his wife. You're very welcome. Thank you. No, thank you. And we wanted to get them something um, very symbolic. Um, as you can see, most of the flowers have bloomed. And that represents the growth that we have seen already here at Goshen. But there are some flowers that have yet to bloom. And that signifies the things that have yet to be fulfilled. And we pray that God will bless our efforts together. After our music of meditation, the next voice you will hear is that of Dr. Casey Adams.
minutes with me. Father God, we thank you for your presence in this place. Lord, as you are here, if you would just move and breathe upon us the breath of life. Restore unto us the joy of your salvation. Give us the word that would transform and change our entire perspective of who you are. Reveal to us what you would have for us today and we will be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor and all the praise because you're worthy. This we ask in your precious name. Amen. If you would open up your Bibles I won't be before you long, but I ask that you would bear with me. If you would turn to the book of Psalm and go to the third chapter, I believe that there we will find a word from the Lord for us this afternoon. If you have it, say amen. book of Psalm chapter 3, not a very long one, but I believe that the word of God has the power to restore and change our trajectory. The book of Psalms chapter 3 verses 1 says, Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. Verse 2 says, many are they who say of me, there is no help for him in God. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. My glory and the one who lifts up my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. I lay down and slept and awoke, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord. Save me, O my God. For you have struck all my enemies on the cheekbone. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessings is upon your people. I could just read the verse and sit down because that's a sermon in and of itself. But if you would allow me time enough this morning to preach on the topic, safety in the Lord. My question to you this morning is, have you ever been in a troubled place? I don't know if that troubled place is at home. I don't know if it's on your job. I don't know if it's in your marriage. I don't know if it's with your children. I have no clue if it's on your nerves. But have you ever been in a troubled place? Verse 1 of Psalms 3 reads, The Lord, how they have increased. Notice what it says there, have they increased, that means that there was trouble before, but now it's worse. How they have increased who trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. David in this chapter is in trouble. And he's crying out 
to God, letting him know all about his troubles. He feels alone. Have you been there? He feels outnumbered. He feels hopeless. David cries out to God because he was dealing with the rising tide of disloyalty. Have you ever experienced that? Both family and friends had turned against him. Now they are enemies, or as we refer to them now as frenemies. And they have now surrounded him. So he cries out to God, Lord, they are trying to take me out if they had the chance. God, they want to destroy my name. God, they want to take out my reputation. God, they want to assassinate my character. God, they wish the worst for me, but not only that, verse 2 says, many are they who say of me, there is no help for him in God. David explains that even the people believe that God cannot help him. They believe that God cannot come through. They believe that God cannot bring healing. They believe that God cannot bring restoration. They believe that God will not fulfill his word. But what I love about David in verse 3, he flips the script and declares, but thou, O Lord, are a shield for me. You are my glory and the one who lifts up my head. David understood that God is his mighty protector. God is the one who will shield him. Now notice this in the text. David says that the Lord is the shield and not the one who provides a shield. Many of you like to take up defenses. Many of you like to take up something to protect yourself. But what David is telling us this morning is that God is the shield that you need to protect your life with. Is there anybody in this house this morning that needs a shield and a covering over their lives? And what David is trying to say is that if you need protection, the only protection you need is God. You are my shield. You are my protector. Then David says that the Lord is the glory and the lifter of his head. David is telling us that when he was at his lowest point, have you ever been low? The Lord was the one that came in and lifted up his head. Why is this important? Y'all real quiet this morning. Why is this important? Let me tell you why this is important. When I looked through the scriptures, my Bible told me the reason why he lifts up David's head is because when your head is lifted, your vision gets better. Because when you're looking down, you cannot really see things around you. Oh, but when God steps in and lifts your head, your vision gets better. When my head is lifted, my circumstances changes. Is there anybody in the house whose head has been held low? In their lowest point, you can't see what's around you, but God says, lift up your head. All he gates and be lifted up. He everlasting door and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. Woo. I could preach in him. When my head is lifted, my perspective is shifted. 
when I read the book of Psalms chapter 121, it says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills whence cometh my help. Where does my help come from? My help cometh from the Lord who created heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee shall not, I said shall not, slumber nor sleep. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is the keeper. The Lord is your shade of his right hand. The sun shall not smite thee. I don't care what the economist says. I don't care what the weatherman says. He said, the sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will preserve you from any evil. I said any evil. That means that nothing that somebody set up for you will be able to prosper. Y'all are real quiet for some people that where God has stepped in a situation and as my father would say, before I even pray. Before I could utter a word. God stepped in right on time. He didn't come when I wanted him to, but he was always there right on time. Where's my church this morning? Where's my church this morning? Hasn't God stepped in for you? When it seems impossible, when it seems like you're down and out, when they haven't finished counting the ballot. God says, you have won. Where you at this morning? God said, you have won. Why have you won? God says, because I am the victory. Now I have the victory. I am the victory. Be encouraged, church. Because when your head is lifted, you are able to see the glory of the Lord. So the song goes on in verse 4. Huh. And this, this, this the part right here. I thought it was before, but that ain't it. <laughs> verse 4, look at, look at verse 4 with me. It says, I cried unto the Lord with my voice and he heard me I could stop right there and he heard me he heard me from his holy hill have you ever just needed to be heard you just want God to hear and give a listening ear unto you but here's the thing David said not only did I cry out but when I cried out, somebody look at the neighbor and say, when I cried out, he heard me. Now we can shout about the Lord hearing our cry, but, but this, is where, this is where the miracle happens. I want you to see it. I want you to see it in the text because sometimes we just read these psalms to get all comfortable, but we missing what the text is trying to say to us. I want you to look very carefully. It says, the Lord heard David from where? His holy hill. This spoke to me. Why does this speak to me? It spoke to me because when I am in my lowest valley. When I'm in my lowest place. Where nobody else can find me. That place of depression. That place of sickness. That place of disease, that place where everything that, that can devour me can find me. 
God said, David said, in my lowest place, God heard me <laughs> from his holy hill. That means that there is no place where God can't hear me. There is no place down low where God can't hear my cry. That means that God can never be too high to hear the cries of his children. Aren't you excited today that even in your despair, even in your depression, even when you think you're down and out, God will hear the cries of his children no matter where you are? No cell phone signal needed. You don't need to call him, beep him, if you want to reach him. All I need to do is cry, Jesus! Aren't you excited that we have a God that is accessible? Y'all real quiet for that. I have a God where I don't need to contact the secretary for his schedule. I have a God that when I need him, I can call him. He's always on call. And he's always there to answer when he hears my cry. Is there anybody in this house that needs to cry out to God and tell him all about your troubles? Is there anybody that needs to cry out to God and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help that I know. I call my friends, they don't answer. I call my family, they don't answer. I call the doctor, they don't answer. I call everybody, they don't answer. But when I call Jesus, when I call on the name of Jesus, circumstances changes. My viewpoint changes. My walk is a little different. My talk is a little different because Jesus is in the room. Do you feel him this morning? Because you're quiet. Because Je let, let me tell you something. Let me tell y'all something, Goshen. Since I'm here now, y'all done prayed over me now. I done prayed over twice. So I'm here now. Let me tell y'all something. If God has done something for you, you better notify something. Your eyes, you better blink. Your hands, you better clap. Your mouth, you better open up. Your feet, you better move. Your body better begin to wind and twist because God has been able to sustain you. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Your bank account can't sustain you like Jesus. Your job can't sustain you like Jesus. Your car can't take you where Jesus can take you. I don't care how many bus passes and train passes you have. They can't take you to where Jesus is going to take you to. My God. Y'all better get excited at Goshen. Let me tell you something. You want God to move in this church? You want God to move in ministry? He has a message for you. Get up and move. You want God to do it for you? You better call out to him and say, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, Goshen needs you. Jesus, my family needs you. Jesus, my children need you. Jesus, my job needs you. Jesus, uh, hey! Y'all better come get me. I'm about to misbehave in here. Jesus uh, is going to fix it. But if you call on the name of Jesus, you want things to change? Believe on the name of Jesus. You can call him, but if you don't believe in him, you have problems. You want your circumstances to change? You better believe on the name of Jesus. 
I don't know where my church is at this morning. But I'm going to tell you, God is getting ready to do something. God is getting ready to do something. The beauty about it is I don't even know what he's going to do. But he's getting ready to do something. And here's what I don't want to happen. Because this is my public service announcement. I don't want you to miss the train. I don't want you to miss the train. Because guess what? If you don't move, he's going to move without you. What do you mean, Pastor? What you can't replace me? I've been here and I've been and I built the church and I did this and I did. It. Let me tell you something. It's biblical. It says that if you won't praise him, he says, I will make an inanimate object animate. And if you won't give me the praise, if you won't give me the glory, I will find some rocks to cry in your place. So if you don't want a rock to take your place, because I would hate for a rock to take my blessings. I would hate for a rock to sit in my place. When Jesus calls my name, I don't want no rock crying out for me. But I'm going to cry out, Jesus, because he's done so much for me. When I was in my lowest place, when I was ready to give up, God set up a standard against the wicked one. Where y'all at? Let me tell y'all something. Y'all, y'all gonna leave up out of here with some confidence. I'm gonna tell you that. I'm about to be a motivational coach. Let me tell y'all something, people of God. You need to stop worrying. Stop fretting. Stop worrying about what tomorrow holds. Because if you know the one who holds tomorrow... All you need to know is, is, is that God has everything under control. I keep saying and I'll continue to say, I don't care what the White House is doing. I don't care what Congress is doing. But I care what God is doing. I said, I care what God is doing. I wish CNN would report about that. I wish MSNBC would get on the radar of what God is doing. Y'all need to wake up. Because you're going to miss the train. Let me tell you something about Goshen. And God. And vision. And wonders. You're sitting in a miracle. Oh, I heard some old time members. You're sitting in a miracle. Some of y'all weren't here and that's all right. But for those of you who are here, you're sitting in a miracle. And here's what God has to say to you today. You ain't seen nothing yet. If you think you can minimize God's miracle working power and God's graciousness and God's goodness to a building, you have something wrong up here. Because God can do above and beyond. Not what you write down. Not what you read in a book. Not what you studied at school. Not what the doctor told you. God said, I can do above and beyond your imagination. That's the stuff you think about. That's the stuff you dream about. God said, I can do above and beyond that what you think or imagine. The question is, do you trust him? Do you trust him? Is he your shield? When you need your home protected, you would go to something called ADT. And they would protect your home. 
when you need your car protected, you would go to places like Allstate because according to them, you're in good hands. When you want to prepare for your life, you go to places and things like life insurance to make sure that your final affairs are taken care of. But when it comes to the things of God, what are you banking on? Is it your experience as a Christian? Is it your daily prayer life? Is it your relationship with your spouse? Is it the amount of times that you pray? Or do you have a belief in a God that can do what he says he will do? I wish I had two or three people at Goshen that would believe and trust in God for the things he has not yet done. But you trust him enough that he will do that which he deems necessary and fit to do. We're not going to block it. We're not going to try to perceive it. We're not going to try to imagine it. But we're going to believe God that he's going to do above and beyond what you can even ask. You up in here asking God for an apartment. He says, I have a house for you. You out here asking for promotion and God says, no, you need to move on. I got something better for you. But you so stubborn, you don't want to move. God says, get up and move. I don't know who I'm talking to in here. But there's some people who are lacking some faith in God. I'm not talking about your Christianity. That seems to be intact because you're here. But I wish you would have some Christianity. And that belief in Christ that you would be Christ-like. It's nice to have a title, but it's another thing to live. Live in your purpose and live what God has called you into. Some of us are just living, but you're not living with purpose. I wish you would have some purpose in your life. And if you had some purpose in your life, you would understand that there's a God who's a purpose-keeping God. When you put things in his hands, things just begin to grow. I wish you would just put everything that you have in the hands of God because when they're in the hands of God things begin to, to flow in a way that you can never think or imagine and here's back to the text when you've put things in the hands of God no enemy no demon in hell no forces that's working against you. No co-worker, no child, no parent, no school, no grade, no government. I said no government. I said no Trump. I said no Congress, no governor. None of that's going to be able to prosper if it's against the workings of God in your life. So my call for you this morning is that you would find safety and refuge in the arms of Jesus. Because when you're in the arms of Jesus, nothing can touch you. Nothing can hurt you. No illness can come nigh you. No purpose cannot be fulfilled. <laughs> no dreams cannot be expired. I wish today I had a few people in this house that would just lean on the arms of Jesus. Some of you are on the brink. But I need y'all to lean in to Jesus because he's the only one that can send you. There's no, there's no job that's going to sustain you like Jesus. Some of y'all have made your jobs your God. Let me, let, me, let me tell you the dangers of that. Making your jobs, your spouse, your boo, your bae, whatever you want to call it, your money, 
your car, all those things you've made your God? You want to know why you're having so much hell and high water at your house? Can I tell you the secret? Can I tell you? You go back to the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. You have made material and aspirational things your God. And because you've done that, you have now caused a war between the God of the universe and the God you have created. So now you're warring against your own God and gods. You don't have no peace on your job. That's because you've made an idol of your job. And because you've made an idol of your job, God is now warring on your job until you get the message that it is I that sustain you and not the thing you've set up. Some of you have made your homes your God. You fix up every minute. You don't want to leave the house. You don't want to hang out. You don't do nothing. You want to stay in your house. That's why it's in foreclosure. You've made your house an idol. And thou shalt not have any other gods before me. There are some churches where there is no God there. Because they have made their church their God. Not the God of the church, but they've made the church their God. And the reason why there's no spirit of God in there is because he's, the spirit of God is too busy fighting with the idol you've created. Reason why churches are struggling with tradition is because you've made tradition your God. And when you've made tradition your God, God is now warring against the idol that you set up. When you've put the needs of your children above your God. When you've put the needs of your spouse above your God. There's a reason why your marriage is not working. There's a reason why your relationship is not working because instead of God being the head of your relationship, God is now warring with the, with the idol you set up within your relationship. Oh, y'all real quiet on that one. Why you're having so much trouble and you feel like there's so many enemies encamped around you? That's because there is. And you now have a God of the universe fighting for you and telling you to wake up. Dismantle your idols. Notice the word I use. I said dismantle them. I don't need you to take them down because when you take them down, you can just put them back up. I said dismantle, break apart, destroy them. Because the God of the universe is now warring with you. And in order to get God's manifest presence in your life, you, you can't have a God that loves you and cares for you and want to bless you when he's warring with you. He's warring with you because he wants to save you. And he says that the idol that you've set up is set up to destroy you. So before it destroys you, I need to destroy it. And you too busy trying to take it down, put it back up. Take it down, put it back up. God says dismantle it. Some of y'all, pray church, some of y'all, are lacking the necessary funds to live because you've turned money and the love of it into an idol. And everybody's trying to get on the prosperity message train. Do this, do that, spin around two times, take some holy water, put it on your head, and everything will be all right soon as you get home. New car, new boo. 
let me, let me tell you something. Let, let me just take a commercial break. Is that all right, Pastor? I'm going to take a commercial break. If you go to anybody's church and they tell you all that foolishness, how everybody's destined to be prosperous monet monetarily wise, you better walk out. Let me tell you why. If I were to get up behind this pulpit and say that you are destined for prosperity, you're going to have money in your bank account. Let me tell you something. As many people as they're in here, y'all ain't all destined for that kind of prosperity. Because some people can't handle it. Because as soon as they hit the bank account, you hitting the mall. You hitting the car dealership. For some unsaved folk, you hitting the casino. You hitting that billion dollar jackpot lottery. God said you can't handle it. But you are destined for prosperity but not in the way that you want it. God says I am here to give you life and to give you life more abundantly. We have switched the message and turned that into life more money. It is our responsibility to re-examine our lives. What idols have you set up that you are now warring against? David said he was warring with his family. What are you warring with? You need to recognize whether this is a war that you set up or the enemy has set up for you. Either way, you still need a God who's going to hear the cries of his children. And the only way he can hear the cry is if you cry out. He may know what's in your heart, but until you express to him what it is that you have on your heart, you're going to stay stagnant in your situation and may end up in the crosshairs of the attacks of the enemy. What are you warring against? Is it principalities? Is it your children? Is it your spouse? Is it your job? Is it your car? Because these cars is tripping out here. What are you warring against? Warring against. Let's, let's, let's come a little closer to home. Can I do that? What are you warring with? Are you warring with your appetite? Some of you have turned food into your God. Anything can be made into an idol, you know. If I love that pew enough, to where that I worship the pew and I love it so much, I've now created an idol of the pew. As ridiculous as that sounds, if I value that pew, that pew more than my life and then more than my relationship with God, God's going to start warring with that pew. <laughs> so when you sit on it, it's still going to start to creak, may fall apart on a Sabbath, never know. Screws may come loose, we don't know what's happening. What are you warring with? Are you warring with you? Some of us are our own worst enemy. And the problem with it is that we don't self-identify. So when we don't self-identify, we blame the wrong person. Oh, that was just nothing but the devil. No, that was you. And you know what's crazy? The devil sure would take the credit. Sometimes we cause havoc in our lives because we are giving credit to where credit is not due. You won't blame everything on the devil. It's not all the devil's fault all the time. Oh, it's nothing but the devil. The church is not growing. 
When's the last time you invited somebody to church? When's the last time you went and go picked somebody up from church? When's the last time you called somebody? Find out how they're doing. See if they're going to come to church. That ain't nothing but the devil. No, that's you. What are you warring against? I want you to take a moment and I want you to think about it. What are you warring against? And once you've established what you're warring against and established the enemy that you're fighting, then you can call on the Lord for help. Just like David did. He said, many are they that say there's no help for me in God, but thou, O Lord, are a shield for me. He's my glory and he lifts up my head. And when my head is lifted, I can see the glory of the Lord. You cannot see the glory of the Lord if you're looking in darkness. Your head is down. You don't want to be bothered. God says, lift up your head. O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door. And here's the part that you missed. That's when the king of glory shall come in. We don't follow steps. You want God to move in this church? Lift up your head. Get your head out of the clouds. I got somebody on my job right now, stuck in his old ways. Every time something new come up, he's just angry, upset, don't like it. Because his head is too stuck up in the past. And can't see what God is doing now. Lift up your head. You know, my parents are here. They're good parents. My father is the king of analogies. My father says to me, God puts eyes in the front of your head, not the back. If he wanted you to go backwards, he would have put them in the back of your head. You have eyes going forward. Lift up your heads. When your head is lifted, then you can see what you're warring against. But then you will be able also to see the glory of the Lord manifesting in your life. If you want to change in your life, this is a no judgment zone because I need change too, so I'm already up here. You want to change in your life? My invitation to you is to come to the hands of Jesus. I tell you this because I have no other options to give you. And it would be blasphemous of myself or Pastor Frazier to come to this pulpit and try to give you some other kind of method or placebo to fix your problem. You want a fix? Jesus can fix it. There is nothing wrong with calling on the name of Jesus. I don't care where you're at. But, God, but, but I'm on my job. You better call on the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something about my mother. I talk about my dad. I'm talking about my mother. My mother, I love her to death. But she, you know, I, I love her to death. Okay. So, my mother is what you would call a prayer warrior. My mother don't care where she at. She's, this is what she said. I plead the blood of Jesus on you. She don't care. She in board meeting, in the hospital, dealing with students. She said, I plead the blood of Jesus. And what I am calling for today is that you will plead the blood of Jesus on your situation, 
on your children, on your spouse, on your church. You think there's something wrong with the church? Plead the blood of Jesus. Stop talking about it. Plead the blood of Jesus. You think there's something wrong with your job? You have two options. You better plead the blood of Jesus or leave. There's something powerful when you call on the name of Jesus. When you call on Jesus, things change. You cannot be the same and enter into the presence of God. You can't. When we come to church, we should be changed. We should be transformed. We should be filled with the Holy Ghost. So my invitation is simple. If you want to plead the blood of Jesus on your situation, your problem, you want to see what the problem is, come to the altar Jesus. right now. This could be your last Keep chance. This could be your last opportunity. This is your chance.
right now. You want your circumstance to change. In the name of Jesus, when we call upon his name, things change. Let's pray together. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we call on you because there's power, wonder-working power in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we call upon you. That's where you stand. Because you're worthy. Because we need a change. We need to be transformed in the name of Jesus. Father God, we need you right now. Right now, God, not tomorrow, not next week, not next year. Right now. Goshen needs you. Because God, outside the four corners of this church is a dying world. Lord, help us to be a lighthouse in a dark, dark place. So that people can run and declare that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. There's somebody here with a need, God. Don't know what it is. Could be physical could be mental could be spiritual could be relational but God we know that you are so good that you can answer every prayer every need every want every desire simultaneously so we're calling upon the name of Jesus and we're bleeding the blood Every sickness and disease must bow to the name of Jesus. God, we're consecrating not only ourselves, but our families unto you. We're pleading the blood. God, we don't know what's going out in these streets, but they're trying to take us out, oh God. But we're pleading the blood of Jesus that covers, that saves, that sanctifies. Oh God, bless our children. From the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, cover them right now. Make them, shape them, mold them into what you would have them to be. Bless our spouses. Bless the difficulties in our relationships. Cover us, oh God. Help us who are blinded to see the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Help us to see the working of the Holy Spirit in our church. Cover our pastor. Prop him up on every bended side in the name of Jesus. We're pleading the blood. You know that the enemy is not happy, but we ask, oh God, that you would take your big foot and stomp on his head. Cover his family. Cover his children. Cover his ministry. Cover his churches. In the name of Jesus. Cover every family here at Goshen. Cover our efforts. Lord, you know what's going to happen at this church. Prepare us. Give us an open mind and an open heart to receive that what you would have for us. And at the end of it, God, we promise to give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise because you our God and God alone. We thank you for this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen.
it's offering time. After a message like that, I don't know what can be said to encourage you to return a monetize an offering. After hearing that Jesus is beside you, on your right side, your left side, behind you, in front of you, you have none to fear. What else could be said? After a message like that, in some church, they get two offerings. We'll just ask for one, a faithful one. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we get ready to return unto you, a portion of that which you have blessed us with, Father, we ask that you will bless it. May it go forward to the finishing of your work. Bless those who have returned. Continue to have mercy on those who didn't. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Makes no difference what you're going through. You're going to make it. God's going to see you through. So hold your head up. Put a smile on your face. This is another test. It won't last always. Somebody get ready. Get ready. For your blessing. For your blessing. Get ready. Get ready. For your miracle. For your miracle. Get ready. Get ready. For your blessing. For your blessing. Get ready. Get ready. For your miracle. For your miracle. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. If you believe it, just say God's gonna bless it. God's gonna bless it. Lift your hands and receive it. Just say God's gonna bless it. God's gonna bless it. Believe it by faith. We say God's gonna bless it. God's gonna bless it. Oh, we say God's gonna bless it. God's gonna bless it. Say God's gonna bless it. God's gonna bless it. Say God's gonna bless it. God's gonna bless it. Say with your name on it. With your name on it. Say God's gonna bless it. God's gonna bless it. Say God's gonna bless it. God's gonna bless it. Say God's gonna bless it. God's gonna bless it. With your name on it. With your name on it. Say with your name on it. 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 With your name. Blessing with your name, and I tell you, we we had church today, yeah, and it was real good. God, the Spirit of the Lord was in this place. I'm glad you came. I'm glad that we were able to worship together today. Uh, just a few things. I want to let you know. Next Sabbath, you want to be here. Uh, we have a special Thanksgiving program prepared for you. So we want to ask that you would just come out and share. In that blessing that God has for you. And I want you to keep another date in mind. I want you to keep the first, the first Sabbath in November. We'll have one of a special speaker that's going to be here with us the first Sabbath in November. No, no, December. I just had to rewind myself. December. First Sabbath in December is going to be here with us. So you want to be able to uh, come and worship with us. This is a rare and very heavy packed weekend tomorrow tomorrow we're going to have our community baby shower and blessing we have praise God over I think 97 mothers registered 
and they're going to be here tomorrow. And, and we're going to be giving diapers and uh, baby clothes and all kinds of stuff. It's going to be a wonderful time. And then we'll have the opportunity of blessing those babies here tomorrow. So we just ask that you will just keep us in prayer. We ask that you would, uh, if you have the means, still donate diapers or donate some, some funds so we can get some more diapers. Because I tell you, we have more than we expected or anticipated. But that's all right. Uh, because when God does something, he does something great. So we're not worried about that. God is in the multiplying business. He knows how to do that, and he knows how to do it well. Uh, but I just want to ask you to be co-laborers with him. So as he is multiplying, if you give, he's also going to be multiplying blessings to you. Amen, somebody. So I just want to remember that tomorrow. We're going to have a wonderful time. Uh, before I close, there's some, there's some students from Andrews University that's, that's here today. I want to ask them to just come forward real quickly and just share with us. They're going to be in the city of Chicago over the Thanksgiving time doing ministry. And, and they're going to be, they're going to share a little bit about what they're doing and what they'll be doing. And this afternoon, for a few moments, if you will come back, they'll also share some stuff, a little program with us. So I'm going to give them the opportunity to share now. Good afternoon. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Is that a Sabbath? Happy Sabbath. <laughs> um, my name is Dianya Nelson. This is my husband, Jermaine Nelson. And um, we're with a, a group called GYM, Greater Youth Movement. And um, back in 2015, we looked at some of the statistics of youth um, in America in different areas. And we saw that some of the statistics showed that 1.2 million young people were dropping out of school. And um, with that, we looked at that and we said, man, this is, there's something wrong, you know? And 25% um, of that you know, pool, you see that they are involved in crime on a daily basis. And um, that's really a tragic reality. And so but from that, uh, GYM was birthed. And um, we do ministry in the lower income communities within um, Michigan, pretty much in the Benson Harbor community. And um, God placed on our heart a mission to not just reach those in our general community, but also to expand our ministry to reaching youth across the nation. And so that's why we're here in Chicago. And Jermaine's just going to share a little bit about what we do in the community. Um, happy Sabbath again, church. Uh, some of the things that we do on a weekly basis in um, Benton Harbor, um, Michigan, is we go, out and go in the community. We try to have a children's program, teens program, and even sometimes an adult program in the community where we try to bring the gospel to these young people. And some of them, they're as my wife was saying, that they're living in an area where they really are in need of help to rise up. The church has instituted something called the Rise Up Method, where we have about 10 steps how to make the different families in each home rise up out of poverty, rise up out of spiritual brokenness, rise up out of financial poverty, rise up out of relational poverty. Different steps how people can rise up. And so uh, we have been trying our best to be able to go into these homes to bring the gospel. One, one young man, his name is, what's his name again? Cody, uh, one young man by the name of Cody, he was, uh, as we were ministering to him, he came up to the pastor, Pastor Taurus Montgomery, and he said, man, I want to race with you. And so Pastor Taurus was building that relationship, racing with him, and then he said, pastor, can you visit me at my school? And so he was inviting the pastor into his life because he didn't really have that dad um, to be there for him. So the pastor went by his school, and then after a week or so, the mother also said, man, they, they're taking so much concern about my son. And so by the time we invited her to church, it was no problem. So she came, and um, we are continually ministering to her. And so we are trying to bring this gospel also to Zambia and to different parts of the, the world. 
And so next year, we're trying to bring some of the students of an Andrews University, and also along with that, bring some of the people in Benton Harbor, those so same young people, to make them have a different perception of life, to give them a broader span, that there are other people who are struggling across the world, and Christ can use these same young people, 10 years old, 11 years old, 12, 13, to be able to spread the gospel into those areas also. And so we're, we're here today in Chicago, and we're trying to, to try to raise funds to be able to do something like that because we want to build a missionary training ground in Zambia so that people in Zambia could be trained to be able to carry the gospel in Zambia also. And so today, I want you guys to prayerfully um, support us. And also, if by God's grace you're convicted, we have some envelopes. The ushers have them right there. Uh, the envelopes to be able to help us to, to carry the gospel continually to Benton Harbor and also in Zambia so we can um, build that missionary training ground. Our goal today is $1,500, and I know that it might sound a, a lot, um, but if each person in this room would give even $20, $30, or, or whatever the Holy Spirit put on your heart as a family, we can be able to achieve this goal and work together in bringing the gospel across the world. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor. I appreciate it. Yes. yes, thank you so much for this opportunity. And I didn't want to sit down without extending this. Um, we're, we do door-to-door -door ministry throughout the week. So we're going to be visiting some of the local schools, the juvenile detention center, and particularly door-to-door -door ministry. And we wanted to invite the young people in, in the congregation. If you're interested, um, this is your community. The yeah. thing about mission work is we, we're not going to stay in Chicago when we leave. And we want to be able to connect with young people, with persons who work in the community, so that when we leave, they have something to go to. They have made connections with people in the church. Right. So please, if you can, we're going to be here this evening at 4, I, I believe. And um, if you're interested in coming door to door with us, we're going to be knocking on doors, praying with the families, passing out peace above the storm, uh, which is pretty much steps to Christ, different books, praying with them, trying to build connections, trying to make relationships so they know that there's somebody here that loves them and they have a church family that they can connect to. So please, um, if you are interested, um, make sure you come out this evening or, or at least see us before you leave so we can get connected. So thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. God is surely moving some young people to do some powerful things for him. And I would love for our young people to be co-laborers with them and go spread the gospel. May God bless you as we leave here today. Remember today we have lunch prepared for you at the back, so we ask that you will stay and enjoy fellowship with us. We want to be able to fellowship with you, get to know you better, and then we'll be back this afternoon for this brief program at the Students of Andrews University uh, put on a little program for us. God bless you. Can we all rise for the benediction? We bow our heads. May the beauty of God be reflected in your eyes, the love of God be reflected in your hands, the wisdom of God be reflected in your words, and the knowledge of God flow from your heart that all might see and seeing believe. Amen. Say God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. We say God's gonna bless. God's gonna bless. We say God's gonna bless it. 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 With your name on it. With your name on it. God's gonna bless 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 it. With your name on 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 it, 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 it's bad, 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 it's
Let's get back to eating and live on top of the world. Say, let's get back to eating and live on top of the world. Say, let's get back to let's get back to eating and live on top of the world. Say, let's get back to let's get back to eating and live on top of the world. Let's get back to. Let's get back to 